Hey everybody, I have an unboxing today. This is the Chewy High 9 Pro. So this is a 8.4 inch tablet. Resolution is pretty nice, 2560 by 1600. So it's a tablet that you can tell from the size of this box is pretty small. It's probably like about the same size as the iPad mini. It's meant to be um, taken out and about because there's actually a SIM tray in this tablet that you can use to make phone calls. So it's like a larger than usual tablet. So the chipset, it's a MediaTek Helio X20. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, only three gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. Three gigs of RAM, I feel like won't be enough. So I hope performance doesn't get bogged down too badly. So this is the tablet right here. Pretty nice, I like the, I like the red button. And there's a little bit of texture in the power button too, I like it. And I like the matte finish so not a fingerprint magnet i'd miss oh i just spoke too soon i wish smartphones would kind of go back to this kind of build and kind of matte finish i think we get too many glass smartphones now i mean i do think glass smartphones look pretty nice but like everybody's doing them it's a little bit overkill so you see right here you have a sim ejector tool because this thing can take a sim card you have papers and right here, these are probably just the charging cables. So that is it. Bare bones packaging. You have a USB-C cable right here, so that's good news. This is charged by USB-C. You have a power brick, and that is it. Um, bezels on this obviously aren't thin. But you know, this device, I don't know the exact price here. I'll look it up later. I believe it's like about 120, 130 bucks. So for that price, the bezels aren't too bad. So I'm gonna power this thing on, set everything up, and I will be back. Hey everybody, so I've been using the Chewy High 9 Pro for about two and a half days. I basically put it through a bunch of ben benchmarks, play some games, and just used it to watch movies and as a media consumption device. Did a little bit of work on it too. Overall, this is a pretty good tablet. But I think at $140, slightly overpriced. I wish it, it was a little bit more powerful. So during the unboxing, I thought it was $110. Turns out this is actually about $145 on, on Gearbest and on other sites is like close to $150. So that's a $40 more expensive than I thought. And for this price, I wish we would have gotten at least four gigs of RAM. There's only three gigs of RAM on this and it definitely shows. When I open a lot of Chrome tabs, and you can see that when you run apps you can actually open multiple apps in desktop format so you see there's a little bit of lag already as i'm opening each tab so the three gigs of ram really struggles i think when i'm opening a lot of apps and the tabs on chrome when i play pbg mobile i can only run the game in the lowest graphics setting and it was very choppy a lot of frame rate drops so kind of almost unplayable i want to say spider-man 2 ran a lot better so this is a helio x20 chipset it's not powerful enough for a for a hip graphically intensive game. But the display looks good though. Um, it's a 2560 by 1600 resolution. And so this is, you know, pretty crisp, especially for a device at this price range. Who the heck is this dude? Oh, Dean Ambrose, okay. Yeah, so, wow, okay, that's a scary picture. Shit. The heck? The f it's like face off, man. But yeah, so um, viewing angle is good. Very pu punchy colors for a $140 device. And again, very crisp. And you can watch Instagram stories in full. So which looks good. But you can't get rid of the navigation buttons, unfortunately. So you, you don't get the truly 100% immersive feel. I'm picky, man. When it comes to Instagram stories, I want it to fill up everything. When you have a little black bar on the bottom, it annoys me. So during the unboxing earlier, I said the, the bezels were, were chunky. But it turns out actually, now that I've used it for, for $140 device, it's, bezels aren't that bad. I mean, this is not any worse than an iPad. So the chin bezels are a little, uh, quite large, as you can see. But the left and right bezels are relatively slim. So I really like the overall build quality too. This is a plastic back, matte finish. Feels a little bit hollow, but not bad. And you can grip the phone with one hand. I like the texture power button here. It's quite clicky volume up and down is pretty clicky too but as you can see there is no fingerprint reader so you have to use a pin 
to unlock your tablet. So it's a little bit annoying because you know women spoiled by getting either face unlock or fingerprint reader. So needing to put in your pin, which takes like three seconds every time is a little bit annoying. So in terms of software, this one's Android 8.0. It's a little bit outdated. I don't like that. So you see it has to swipe up to bring up the app tray, but you can't get rid of this stupid button, which annoys me. Like, come on, fix this. Because this button is to launch the app drawer in older versions of Android. New versions of Android, you can swipe up, then this button is not needed anymore. So get rid of this button. Let me have the option to delete it, but I can't delete it. And also you can't get rid of this Google bar, which is really annoying. I don't like this bar on my home screen. But that's not really Chewy's fault. That's stock vanilla Android's problem. This is probably Chewy's fault. I've seen other phone makers like Doogie get rid of it. So Android 8.0, um, not a lot in settings. You see that is it. So you don't get gestures or anything. No double tap to, to lock, none of that. You can't bring down notification shape by swiping the middle. You have to swipe from the top. And you see it's a little bit funny when you swipe from the top because it comes down kind of narrow, like it's smartphone style, but then the display is wider. But I do like that it comes down from the side of the screen that you swipe. So I swipe from the right, from the right, from the left, from the left. So that's pretty cool. And then you do get a clear all button. So we'll check out the benchmarks number really quick. I ran this on Geekbench 4, scored a 3650 multi-core, 1347 single core. So 3650, it's, it's, it's not great, but it's okay. This is about on par with like a 2016 flagship phone. So you got a phone in 2016, such as a Samsung Galaxy Note 5 or like an LG V10. Actually, no, 16 is not V10, V20. Then that's about the same score, same power you'd expect. As mentioned, really couldn't handle PBG Mobile, handle Spider-Man too fine, handle Tekken fine too. I also ran the tablet through N22 benchmarks, scored a 91,318. So it defeated only 28% of users. So this is not a high score at all. So the Chewy Hi9 Pro has a slot up here which supports a sim card which means you can use this as a phone if you want it's a giant ass phone i test the phone calls on it it's fine it got 4g reception just fine and you can put an sd card in it you'll probably need to because 32 gigs of internal storage is not that much and it's also emmc storage so it's not the fastest storage out there compared to a lot of the other devices i test so the speaker it's on the back it's a very poor location and the sound it's pretty weak. So you see this is 75% volume already and the volume it's 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 a uh, pretty low. The screen looks good though. So speakers on the top right, so you can kinda of muffle it with your finger. Yeah, so um, if you're using this as a media consumption device, I would suggest plugging in a pair of headphones. And you probably want to use wired headphones too because the Bluetooth connection here is only 4.2, which for my tested, 4.2 is a little bit old. It, it's fine if you're sitting right in front of it, but the range is not that strong. And there's an audio delay when you're watching videos with wireless headphones. So I also ran this thing on PC Mark's battery test, which you might recall pushes the phone very heavily from 80% to 20% and then that, and then to see how long it lasts. So I ran it through battery tests. So I grabbed a screenshot and it lasted five hours and 13 minutes on PC Mark's battery test. So that means from 80% to 20% it lasted five hours, 13 minutes. That's not that good considering this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. On the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, for example, that lasted eight hours and that phone has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now I understand this is a larger screen and it has more resolutions than the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, but still five hours and 13 minutes is not good for a tablet. So a uh, battery life is below par. For 5,000 milliamp hour, I expected a bit more. So I think it might be because of software, it's just not that optimized for it. The chipset is not efficient with power. So there is a camera right here but I'm not gonna test the camera too much because it's a very bare bones camera app. As you can see, typical stock engine and it's shutter speed, it's very, very slow. I mean, look at this, I tap on it. It's like almost a full second before it takes a photo. So, and photo quality, again, it's it's not gonna be 
good unless you're shooting in broad daylight. You take this out in the evening or at night, photos can be completely blurry. So I wouldn't use this as a camera at all. This is a media consumption device and there is a good use for this tablet though. Um, because it's quite portable and very light. I would say this is about one pound. This is a good portable working machine for someone like me because I, I, in addition to doing YouTube, I'm also a writer. I'm actually mainly a writer. So I like to go, I like to go write at coffee shops because I don't want to just be stuck in my house all day. So what I do is I always carry a portable keyboard, a foldable keyboard and a little, little stand with me at all times in my backpack. So then just in case if I need to do writing last minute, I can always use my smartphone. So with this, I figured this would be a better option because the screen is a lot larger than a smartphone and yet it's not as heavy as a laptop because, you know, there's a lot of walking in Hong Kong. So it's even carrying a laptop around all day can be annoying and tiring. So with this, use this keyboard, which is very light and folds up very small. And boom, I can immediately go into Google Docs and start writing. So this setup, I quite enjoy. And this would be my main use for this tablet. This is about the perfect size for a portable writing machine because a smartphone screen, it's a little bit cramped, but a laptop, sometimes it's, it's a little bit too bulky and big for me. If I'm just writing a Word document, I don't need a 13 inch laptop screen. This will do. So this is probably the best use scenario for this Chewy High 9 Pro. Because gaming wise, you can't really run heavy games on this. So best use scenario is to use it as a portable work machine and a portable Netflix machine. This is very easy to hold, very light. You can bring this on a plane and prop it up and someone push their seats back and it won't really get in the way. So yeah, this is the Chewy High 9 Pro available for 145 bucks on Gearbest. Thanks for watching.